for asking me. I've been working with uh, Databricks, um, implementing it from scratch uh, since 2021, uh, when I joined Gazprom Bank. There was a project of uh, data migration from on-premise uh, to the cloud. Uh, the bank uh, decided to get rid of um, Hadoop. Uh, we had uh, EGDFS as uh, data lake and used Apache Spark as a compute. This on-premise data lake uh, had uh, traditional drawbacks, such as um, consistency due to lack of ACID transactions, cluster management and its limit capacity. I created uh, notebooks in uh, Databricks uh, with uh, transformations uh, to read. Uh, I used uh, PySpark to read uh, the data and uh, write it to Delta format, uh, then apply uh, transformations. I prefer uh, to use uh, Spark SQL for data transformations because uh, I guess SQL is uh, more widespread than Python and more people can um, easily understand the code and the whole transformations. We, uh, we just uh, migrate uh, from on-premise uh, to, uh, to the cloud, to Databricks. It was uh, AWS uh, managed uh, services uh, with Databricks. And uh, also at Gazprom Bank, I was engaged in the project with um, integration with uh, Alation. The goal was to implement uh, data governance from framework at the bank. Uh, I guess uh, we had typical problem like when data analysts or business analysts uh, can't find out the data transformations. So to improve just data accessibility. Yeah, I uh, connected uh, Alation with uh, data sources, also implemented uh, configured roles, different roles, uh, permissions, uh, Im also implemented data quality checks. Um, like uniqueness, so accepted values, for example. At the bank, it was outstanding balance, and it exceed the credit limit. Additionally, implemented data masking uh, to hide some personal information uh, when we create reports for external companies like um, audit external company, or it might be a central bank as government organization. It's a passport and passport number has 10 digits, uh, we hide it. Or if the column title, for example, has the word name, then we apply the appropriate uh, label to it. It was uh, in my current position at Rocky Data. It was another project with uh, Databricks, uh, but uh, with uh, Azure managed uh, services, that's why I work with uh, Azure Data Factory, Storage, um, SQL database, I implement Unity Catalog, yeah, because uh, there wasn't a data governance platform such as Alation or Calibra at the company, so I implemented yeah, Unity Catalog to collect metadata, uh, to uh, centralize all uh, data assets uh, across um, Databricks environment to have an ability uh, to grant them permissions uh, for different roles with different users. Uh, yeah, yeah, I use uh, Data Factory, connects its uh, data sources uh, to ingest data to build a data pipeline uh, with uh, some data flow. I use triggers to schedule a pipeline to my pipeline. Yeah, and to ingest data uh, <clears throat> at, uh, sometimes it was uh, when we need to get data at the certain period of time. For example, yeah, we, we know that uh, the day uh, all operations was closed uh, yesterday, so we can uh, schedule our pipeline uh, to ingest data uh, at night. Uh, and uh, at night it was uh, easier to uh, perform this uh, process because uh, we, we had less users, uh, active users, so the performance of clusters were uh, better. Some of the uh, triggers were event triggers when we get a new uh, batch of uh, data yeah so we can just uh, execute the pipeline yeah and uh, dump the data to databricks so then in databricks to put all the data 
uh, by the layers, yeah, since bronze, then uh, to the silver layer, to do some transformations to create a silver layer, a gold la and gold layer for our uh, stakeholders, for our end users. In data masking, I, I think that, uh, I guess that data masking is a temporary height uh, based on the role. For example, if you have a role like a business users so in one region and you just uh, can see the sales from another region, masking uh, allows uh, you to temporarily hide this uh, information. Description is more complicated uh, based on key, uh, like it's a not temporary approach could be one way. The requirement was uh, to mask uh, personal information. Um, mm -hmm. Bank uh, produced many reports for government organization, monthly reports uh, with uh, loan portfolio, with uh, deposits, uh, also um, a lot of reports for um, external audit company because they need to approve credit rating of the bank. Yeah, so uh, the requirements was to hide all personal information like uh, name, uh, last name. It would look like uh, stars for the end users yeah, in, in the report uh, yeah, we we will have um, a column with first name, last name for the end users with who who don't have an access uh, for this information? It was just stars. I implemented data masking. This uh, data masking process with uh, user-defined functions. It was a custom process. Uh, I used uh, Python libraries. Just hide the sensitive information and uh, replace it. Yeah, with uh, with uh, symbols, with uh, stars. It's a process uh, that allows you to manage uh, access uh, to the different resources within, for example, Databricks or in Snowflake. Uh, we have yeah the similar access control. When I used uh, with uh, Snowflake for dbt for example or when i use uh, fivetran to ingest data to snowflake for each of these tool i created a separate uh, role and uh, grant some permissions uh, to this role the similar and manage the uh, roles uh, between users uh, different users like um, developers analysts business users i i, I grouped uh, users allows to easily manage uh, a group of developer rather than uh, grant access for uh, each person. Developer uh, can start a cluster or um, analyst can create a notebook and so on. Uh, I've implemented uh, some Mm, basic uh, data quality checks uh, like uh, uniqueness, non-nullness, uh, accepted values, similar to dbt tests, similar tests like guilty uh, dbt tests. It was a different type of uh, data, for example, um, accepted values, I could check uh, the product type, I could check that uh, I didn't have a um, null rating uh, in the column with uh, customer rating because if we have a missed uh, customer rating, uh, we have to, uh, our internal rating based uh, system calculate the provision at 100%. Uh, we could see the um, spike in the provision uh, and uh, th that's not right. That's, uh, the, it was often uh, some human mistake. Uh, somebody just uh, forgot to calculate the rating. Rating, it was uh, numbers, for example. We convert uh, string to numbers. Regarding the customers, for example, 
We have a unique key in the column with a customer ID to avoid duplicates, product ID, for example. Also, I added freshness uh, test uh, data to check the freshness, yeah, to prevent uh, bad data in the reports. We can concat columns and generate some hash key. Row number just put the values for each uh, rows, just number of uh, the row. Uh, rank uh, put the values for each row, but uh, if uh, we have equal value, for example, uh, equal uh, customer ID, rank just put the uh, equal value uh, for them. For example, if we have an equal customer ID, uh, rank just uh, put the one, two, two, for example, uh, then uh, skip the value three, the number three, because uh, we have two uh, equal customer ID and uh, their, uh, their number was two. And a dense rank will do almost the same, but uh, don't skip uh, the values. So we have like one, two, two, three, four, and so on. A fact or dimension? It's a dimension because we have descriptive information about our customers and usually fact uh, table, it is uh, consists of some information about sales for example and uh, in fact table we have uh, customer id we can connect this uh, dimension and uh, fact table uh, to retrieve information fact table where customer are used as a dimension like sales for example we have fact table with uh, order ID, customer ID. Based on customer ID, we can uh, mm -hmm. calculate some um, product metrics. I know about slowly changing dimensions. Uh, there are um, several types of slowly changing dimensions. I think the most popular is, uh, is CD type 2, uh, when we have column uh, with start date and end date. I think the less, less popular is uh, type 1, when we just uh, overwrite the uh, data. I used uh, CD type 2 because uh, we can always uh, to see the mm, history of uh, our changes. It's easier to track all changes. Try to uh, recall the situation when I used uh, type 1, when I overwrite. I analyzed the uh, billings in Azure and to monitor and analyze cost of our clusters uh, for Databricks, uh, where we have the mm, waste of compute, for example. I think when, when we start to uh, build some projects, uh, we don't think uh, usually about uh, costs and uh, just put everything on the table. Yeah, but uh, later for the team, when we build a um, dashboard for our end users, for example, for our team, and uh, we see that uh, this uh, dashboard just waste our compute and uh, yeah, I helped to keep uh, Azure cost in budget. Cluster was too big uh, and and we have uh, too many clusters for the teams. I revised uh, all our clusters, uh, their types, considered to use uh, smaller uh, clusters for the team because they just don't use the um, full of uh, their performance and it's just uh, don't need to waste money on um, to keep uh, such high performance uh, class. 
I have uh, some questions. How do you use uh, Databricks and uh, Snowflake? Uh, can you please uh, walk me through the data architecture uh, and many, any plans uh, for the for future upgrades or changes? BI tool, uh, I think it's Power BI uh, you have. Great, uh, thank you. Yeah.